Eleanor and Park, Chapter 33, Eleanor. Eleanor slept till noon on Christmas Day, until her mom finally came in and told her to wake up. Are you okay? Her mom asked. I'm asleep. You look like you're getting a cold. Does that mean I can go back to sleep? I guess so. Look, Eleanor. Her mother stepped away from the door, and her voice dropped. I'm going to talk to Richie about this summer. I think I can get him to change his mind about that camp. Eleanor opened her eyes. No, no, I don't want to go. But I thought you'd jump at the chance to get out of here. No, Eleanor said. I don't want to have to leave everybody again. Saying it made it feel like 100% jerk, but she'd say anything to spend the summer with Park, and she wasn't even going to tell herself that he'd probably be sick of her by then. I want to stay home, she said. Her mom nodded. Okay, she said. Then I won't mention it, but if you change your mind, I won't, Eleanor said. Her mom left the room, and Eleanor pretended to go back to sleep. Mark. He slept until noon on Christmas Day until Josh came in and sprayed him with one of his, one of their mom's salon water bottles. Dad says that if you don't get up, he's going to let me have all your presents. Mark beat Josh back with a pillow. Everybody else was waiting for him, and the whole house smelled like turkey. His grandma wanted him to open her present first. A new Kiss Me I'm Irish t-shirt. A bigger size than last year, which meant it would be a size too big. His parents gave him a $50 gift certificate to Jurassic Plastic, the punk rock record store downtown. Mark was surprised that they'd think of that. And he was surprised that DP sold gift certificates. Not very punk. He also got two black sweaters that, might actually, that he might actually wear. Some Avon cologne and a bottle shaped like an electric guitar. And an empty key ring which his dad made sure everybody noticed. Mark's 16th birthday had come and gone, and he didn't even care about care anymore about getting his license and driving himself to school. He wasn't going to give up his only guaranteed, guaranteed time with Eleanor. She'd already told him that as awesome as last night was, they both agreed it was awesome. She couldn't risk sneaking out again. Any one of my siblings could have woken up. They still could. And they would definitely tell on me. They have a very confused, they have very confused alliances. But if you're quiet, that's when she told him that most nights she shared a room with all of her brothers and sisters. All of them. A room the size of his, she said, minus the water bed. They were sitting against the back door in the elementary school, in a little alcove where nobody, where no one would see them unless they were really looking where the snow didn't fall directly on their faces. They sat next to each other, facing each other, holding hands. There was nothing between them now. Nothing stupid and selfish, just taking up space. So you have two brothers and two sisters. Three brothers and one sister. What are the names? Why? I'm just curious. He said, is it classified? She sighed. Ben, Maisie. Maisie? Yeah. Then Mouse. Jeremiah, he's five. Then the baby, Little Richie. Park laughed. You call him Little Richie? Well, his dad is a big Richie. Not that that's, that he's very big either. I know, but like Little Richard. Tutti Fruity. Oh my God, I never thought of that. Why haven't I ever thought of that? He pulled her hands down to his chest. He still hadn't managed to touch Eleanor anywhere below the chin or above the elbow. She didn't think she'd necessarily stop him if he tried, but what if she did? That'd be awful. Anyway, her hands and her face were excellent. You guys get along? Sometimes they're all crazy. How can a five-year-old be crazy? Oh my God, Mouse? He's the craziest of them all. He's always got a hammer or a jackrabbit or something stuck in his back pocket, and he refuses to wear a shirt. Mark laughed. How is Maisie crazy? Well, she's mean, for starters. And she fights like a street person, like take off your earrings fights. How old is she? Eight, no, nine. What about Ben? Ben, she looked away. You've seen Ben. He's almost Josh's age. He needs a haircut. Does Richie hate them too? Eleanor pushed her face forward. Do you want to talk about this? He pushed back. Why do you want to talk about this? He pushed back. Because it's your life. Because I'm interested. It's like you've got all these weird barriers set up. Like you only want me to have access to tiny parts of you. 
Yes, she said, crossing her arms. Barriers, caution tapes. I'm doing you a favor. Don't, he said. I can handle it. He put his thumb between her eyebrows and tried to smooth out the frown. This whole stupid fight was about keeping secrets. Keeping secrets about your demonic ex-girlfriend. I don't have a, any demonic ex-anythings. Does Richie hate your brothers and sisters too? Stop saying his name. She was whispering. I'm sorry. Park whispered back. He hates everybody, I think. Not your mom. Especially her. You mean to her? Eleanor rolled her eyes. Wiped her cheek with her pajama sleeves. <coughs> uh, yeah. Park took her hands again. Why doesn't she leave? She shook her head. I don't think she can. I don't think there's enough of her left. Is she scared of him? He asked. Yeah. Are you scared of him? Me? I know you're scared of getting kicked out, but are you scared of him? No. She lifted her chin. No. I just have to lie low, you know. As long as I stay out of his way, I'm fine. I just have to be invisible. Park smiled. What? She asked. You? Invisible? She smiled. He let go of her hands and held her face. Her cheeks were cold. Her eyes, and her eyes were fathomlessly... <coughs> And her eyes were fathomless in the dark. She was all he could see. Eventually, it was too cold to stay out there. Even the insides of their mouths were freezing. <clears throat> Eleanor. Bridgie said Eleanor had to come out of her room for Christmas dinner. Fine. <clears throat> she really was getting a cold, so at least it didn't seem like she was faking it all day. Dinner was awesome. Her mom could really cook when she had actual food to work with. Something other than legumes. They had turkey with stuffing and mashed potatoes swimming with dill and butter. For dessert, there was rice pudding and pepper cookies, which her mom only ever made on Christmas. At least that had been the rule back when her mom used to make all kinds of cookies all year long. The little kids didn't know what they were missing now. When Eleanor and Ben were little, their mom baked constantly. There was always fresh cookies in the kitchen when Eleanor got home from school. And real breakfast every morning. Eggs and bacon or pancakes and sausage or oatmeal with cream and brown sugar. Eleanor used to think that that was why she was so fat. Because, but look at her now. She was starving all the time and she was still enormous. They all tore into Christmas dinner like it was their last meal, which it practically was, at least for a while. Mm. Ben ate both the turkey legs, and Mouse ate an entire plate of mashed potatoes. Richie had been drinking all day again, so he was all kinds of festive at dinner. Laughing too much and too loud, but you couldn't enjoy the fact that he was in a good mood. Because it was all kind, it was the kind of good mood that was just on the edge of a bad one. And they're all waiting for him to cross over, which he did, as soon as he realized there was no pumpkin pie. What the F is this? He said, flicking his spoon at the Rosalamid. It's rice pudding, Ben said, stupid with turkey. I know it's pudding, Richie said. Where's the pumpkin pie, Sabrina? He shouted into the kitchen. I told you to make a real Christmas dinner. I gave you the money for a real Christmas dinner. Mom stood in the doorway to the kitchen. She hadn't sat down to eat. It's, it's a traditional Danish Christmas dessert, Eleanor thought. My grandmother made it, and her grandmother made it, and it's better than pumpkin pie. It's special. <clears throat> it's just that I forgot to buy pumpkin, her mother said. How could you forget the effing pumpkin on Christmas, Richie said, curling the stainless steel bowl of rice pudding. It hit the wall near her mother and sprayed weepy chunks everywhere. Everyone but Richie stayed still. He stood up unsteadily from his chair. I'm going to buy some pumpkin pie. So this family can have a real effing Christmas dinner. He walked to the back door. As soon as they heard his truck tear out, Eleanor's mom picked up the bowl of what was left of the rice pudding, then skimmed the top of the broil of rice pudding off the floor. Who wants cherry sauce, she said. They all did. Eleanor cleaned the rest of the pudding and Ben turned on the TV. They watched the Grinch and Frosty the Snowman in a Christmas carol. Their mom even sat down to watch with them. Eleanor couldn't help but think that if the ghost of Christmas past showed up, <clears throat> he'd be disgusted with their whole situation. 
and Eleanor felt full and happy when she fell asleep.